I tell you, another motherfucker that can fuck off. Rick Springfield. He can fuck off. <laughs> he never told anyone why he was so upset with Rick Springfield. It's ridiculous. Look at that. Still his soap opera fucking son of a bitch. And can you beep this out? He then spoke on the subject of Axl Rose from the band Guns N' Roses. Many people in the industry claim that it was Esteban that showed Axel the art of bandana knots. Axel denies all accusations. Well, shit, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Of course. I ain't got to point out the obvious. That son of a bitch, though, boy. He, he made some wrong turns. <laughs> he did. Sorry, sorry, sight. I told him how to do this. I'm still doing it. I was right. He'd still be making a fortune if it was me, man. Look at me. Beautiful, but old. Beautiful, but old. Beautiful, right? But a little bit old. Beautiful? A little bit old? A little beautiful? Come on. Touch me. Come on. Oh, yeah. Give me a hug. Come on. <laughs> you knew it! That's why. That's why I make a fortune. Fuck accent. During our lengthy interview, Esteban slipped and mentioned some of the unfortunate problems that plague music and youth. Not Kurt Cobain, I'm talking about Guns N' Roses. Top Notch, the heroin addict. That dude non-stop with that shit. Give it to you constantly. Kurt Cobain had problems. Where do you get the heroin? Oh. Where, where is that? Uh... Along with the lifestyle Esteban was living, came problems. And like anyone else, Esteban looked elsewhere for solutions. He found those solutions, but on the other side of the world, in a region called Tibet. Oh, Tibet. There's a story. There's a story. And there was a story. Esteban went to Tibet to escape his reality, and there he found inner peace and a chance to keep his mind pure and away from the unhealthy lifestyle that was spinning out of control. I was going through some, uh, some troubles. <laughs> not, not really troubles. I mean, on a normal person's lay of trouble, it probably was nothing. So I, I was like, I got to get the hell away. So I, I decided to go to Tibet. It, it started with a T. I had no idea where it was, and I decided that, you know, I'd heard that some people would get saved out there. So I went out to Tibet, and uh, I worked for this great company, man. We were doing work that mattered, you know? Mattered, you know? What kind of work? You know? Mattered. Oh, we were making a cinder block. After seven years in Tibet, his practice of yoga and cinder block making made him realize that partying and the rock and roll lifestyle wasn't what life was about. Then came ZZ Top. No, no, actually, I met, Z, I met ZZ Top in heaven. <laughs> no, I'm lying. I, I never met him in heaven. I ain't been there yet. Maybe. <laughs> Is it cribs y'all gonna come eat? No, I met ZZ Top in Asia. No, I met ZZ Top at an Asia show. That's what I meant to say. Man, you're baffling me. <laughs> you should have brought me a list. <laughs> you should have brought me a list. <laughs> a list would have been helpful. Come here. Come here. Give me a hug. Come on. Give me a hug, you son of a bitch. <laughs>